So now to section 1.4. Uh, we Today we are going to be discussing angles and their measures. An angle is something that consists of two different rays that have the same initial point. Um, they can also be two segments or two lines. How do you name an angle, Mrs. Hogravy? Great question, Mrs. Palermo. To name an angle, we want to make sure that we focus on where the vertex of that angle is. So looking to see what is that one common point that those two rays share. So I see you're kind of hitting down here. So what's the vertex of this? Let's go backwards here. Good question. The vertex is point A. So you could say point A or you could just say A. Absolutely. Now, the, to name the angle, once I know where the vertex is, I'm going to go ahead and always make sure that that vertex is in the middle of my naming. So I could call this angle BAC or angle CAB. And whenever you're naming them, it's important to always list a point that's on each of the rays, but always making sure that that vertex is in the middle. Now in this case, because there's only two rays that are coming off of that one initial point, I could call this angle A as well. But just be careful, kids, because I'll tell you right now that when you start naming things with just that one vertex, that doesn't always work. There's times where you'll have multiple angles coming off of that same vertex where you're going to have to be careful with your naming and always use those three letters. And we'll see those in some examples there. Um, there is one way now, Ms. Hoker didn't say this because it's not actually in the picture, but another way, which sometimes they'll have this in the picture, is they'll have a number inside of the angle. So if this was a one inside, we could just say this is angle one. So that only is true if they have that provided. So you can't just <laughs> name an angle with a, a number if yeah, it's not there. Don't make up your own numbers. Um, okay, so we talked about vertex. That's the initial point of the, both the rays. Um, the name now going to the sides. Um, what are the sides of this angle? In this case, the sides are both rays. So I would say the sides are ray AB and ray AC. And again, notice how both of these rays are named with the same initial point because they share that initial point. Now, would these rays be opposite rays because they share the same initial point? No, because they don't form a straight line. They're not collinear. Good, 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 good. All right. Moving on. All right, so to classify angles, we know that there are several different types of angles. We have acute angles. We have obtuse angles. We have right angles. And we have straight angles. So define an acute angle. An acute angle would be an angle that most of you guys would say it's less than 90. So we could say it's anywhere from 0 to less than 90 degrees. So this is talking about the measurement. So the measures. measures. So we could even write it as a compound inequality if we want to. Ah. And say that. So less than 90 and but greater than, greater than zero. Well, forgot the than up there. <laughs> so, so somewhere between zero. So, like, let's say let's this is it. angle A. Yeah, there you is go. between zero and ninety. Perfect. Okay. Now, a picture. Most people would say, "Oh, it's a cute. It's so adorable. It's small. It's tiny." So let's draw our tiny little angle. So we're gonna go ahead and draw an angle that is somewhere less than 90 degrees. And of uh, course, when we draw our picture, we want to make sure to go ahead and label those pictures as well. So we can call that angle, I don't know, A, B, C, or angle A. There we go. That's fine. All right, obtuse definition. Well, now this one, we know that it has to be more than the 90 degrees. Okay. So but it also... More than 90, but what? but it also has to be less than 180. So we want to make sure that our angle is not going to be larger than a straight line. It's yeah. going to be somewhere you between some, the 90 degrees and You the have some line. restrictions on it. So if we use a little compound inequality. If I drew a picture of it, obviously we don't want it to look less than 90. So bigger than one, uh, or bigger than 90, but not exactly 180, something exactly. like that. And Perfect. This could be angle B. Lovely. All right, right angle, you know this one. <laughs> exactly 45. So exactly 90 degrees. That's funny. 45. That's funny. <laughs> measures 90 degrees. Yes. 
and the picture of it to show that would look something like it looks something like that so we have a 90 degree angle and to show a 90 degree angle you can kind of see the little um, box there kind of to represent that one thing you're gonna see one thing to comment on on all of these angles you don't want to necessarily assume by the picture um, but one way to know that it's a right angle is it has a little a, a box there um, straight angle definition Straight angle would be exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so exactly 180 degrees. And to draw that, what would that look like? Straight line, it looks like, but yeah. it's not really a straight line. It's really two opposite rays. Ooh, using some vocab from a couple days ago. Okay, so it would be basically, so if I call this A, B, C, these points, it'd make up these two opposite rays. Awesome. All right, we've talked about congruent segments. We want to talk today about congruent angles. And to be congruent angles, they're angles that have the same measure. So we've talked about this idea of if they have the same measure, then the angles are, well, we've talked about it with segments. If they had the same measure, the segments were congruent. In this case, if they have the same measure, the angles are congruent. Again, when we talk about congruence, we're talking about their pictures. So their measures are equal. So when you see up here, we see this measures are equal then the angles are congruent. Now, be careful with this notation. Notice when we talk about the measure of an angle, you put a little M before the angle sign. Okay, that makes sense. So the measure of angle BAC, this would actually be a number. So this mm. could be a 32 degrees. Okay. Okay. Now over here, when you just see angle BAC, that's talking about the picture itself. It's talking about the angle. So angles can be congruent, but their measures can be equal. Okay. All right. Makes sense. All right. So we have uh, already learned two postulates up to this point. Here's another postulate. And remember, a postulate is is a rule. It's true. It doesn't have to be proven. Um, this one is similar to a um, postulate we learned a couple days ago, the ruler postulate. But notice it's the protractor postulate. So kind of a no-brainer that's going to have to deal with angles instead of segments. Um, this postulate basically says if you want to find the measure of an angle, in this case angle AOB, it is equal to the absolute value, again this should kind of sound familiar to the ruler postulate, of the difference between the real numbers for those rays. So notice ray OB and ray OA where they intersect the protractor, you subtract those coordinates, so 130 minus 25 absolute value if you need to basically because you want a positive amount and then that gives you the measure of that angle so now, technically i could have done 25 minus 130 because yeah. by taking that absolute value yeah now some of you are probably thinking this and i would be too most of the time when you measure an angle one of the rays you usually want to line up with the protractor so you don't have to do any subtracting because then you can just find the measure easily that way so all right now, we have a couple different types of angles we, or points we could talk about within an angle. So we can talk about the interior of an angle, which is any point that lies inside of that angle. We also have the exterior angles, which are points that are outside of the angle. Notice that interior and exterior points are not actually on the angle itself. They're either inside of it or outside of it. That makes sense. Adjacent angles, another vocab, lots of vocab in this chapter. Uh, adjacent angles are basically two angles that share a common vertex, all right, so they share a common vertex and a side. This part kind of important, but they cannot contain any common interior points. So we, Ms. Hogarth, we just talked about what that is. So if I was looking at this picture, you have to name two angles that have a common vertex and side but you cannot have a common interior point. So 
Let's cup up, come up with some pairs of adjacent angles. So do you see a couple in that picture, Mrs. Hope Gravy? I do, actually. And I noticed that all of these angles have a common vertex of point T. Oh. So really, I know that T is going to be the vertex of any angle that I talk about here. And I would not want to call any of these angles just angle T because there's several angles that have that common vertex. Yeah, and if you name it by said angle T, well, which angle T are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. So good idea. All right, and they have to have a common side. So if I use... Ray TY is my common side. I could say angle GTY and angle YTX, or I could have even said YTL, would have been adjacent angles because they're they're right next to each other. They have that one common side, but there's no points in their interiors that would ever overlap. Good. So like this a angle here that she first named and this angle, they have that vertex that they share in common, a side, and all the interior points here and all the interior points here do not match up. All right. There's, they're all unique. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I'm going to name an angle and I'm going to ask you to name a um, adjacent angle to it. Okay. So if I said angle... Uh, let's do XTL, different angle. Can you name a, an, an adjacent angle to that? Well, I know it has to have XT in common because TL, the only way I could come up with something that would be adjacent would be if I had another ray on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So let's say XTG. Good. And notice she, she's not naming XTY, which would work as well. She's naming a, a little bit a larger, looks like an obtuse angle in a sense. Um, why not, why not if I did angle XTG, so that angle right there that you just named, would that be adjacent to angle YTG? Good question. And if I take a look at those, the common side that they share is that GT. And because that common side is not really between the other mm. two, notice that now those have some interior points in common. Any point that's in GTY is also going to be a point that's somewhere inside of GTX. Okay. So they have common points, common interior points, so therefore they're not adjacent. So angles. basically they have the common vertex and common side, but they didn't have, they have common points and interior points, so that wouldn't work. I think for one way for, I think a good way to remember this is you can't, in, adjacent angles are never inside of each other. It's always right next to each other, like you mentioned. Exactly. So good idea. Another thing is angle GTY and angle XTL are not adjacent because they don't share a common side. Exactly. So. The angle addition postulate is the last postulate we're going to focus on today. And hopefully it sounds a little bit like the segment addition postulate. Notice segment addition postulate was SAP. This is AAP because it's the angle addition postulate. This says that if P is in the interior of an angle, so P is some point that's somewhere inside of that angle, then if I look at the angles that are formed using that P as one of their now sides and say RSP and PST, those two angles together, their measures do equal the measure of the larger angle that you started with, this RST. So very similar to what we talked about with the segment addition postulate. Notice it's the measures of these angles mm -hmm. that I can add. I cannot add angles themselves. I can only add their measures because the Makes measures sense. are talking about the numbers. So the measure of those two angles together will equal the measure of that larger angle. So something I'm noticing is the two angles that you're adding up to get a larger one, they're adjacent angles as well. They are. And again, these postulates that you're going to see are kind of no-brainers. Yeah. It makes sense that yeah. if I look at this measure right here and I add it to this measure right here, of course it's going to equal that larger angle yeah. measure as well. Makes sense.